perhaps a word about the vestments and their derivation. They originally were the street clothes of ordinary people in ancient times. The long white robe called the alb was simply the usual garment that people would wear in the hot Mediterranean climate. The stole that bishops and priests and deacons wear was originally a sign of holding office in ancient Rome, and so it was a way to identify the leader of the assembly. And the special vestment that a priest or a bishop wears for mass, the outer vestment, called the chasuble, was originally an overcoat. And you also notice that both the pope and the archbishop are wearing a small band around their necks of white wool with black crosses on it. This is actually the most ancient vestment in the Christian church called a pallium, made out of wool and symbolizing the bishop as a shepherd carrying the sheep on his shoulders. It's given, worn by the pope and by archbishops as a sign of sharing in the pastoral ministry. And the mitre, in use since the 11th century, simply to help you pick out the bishop in a large crowd, came to have a symbolic meaning, I think, of the Old and New Testaments. It's worn by the bishop or the pope when he's walking or sitting, but when he's praying, you'll notice it's removed. He prays with his head uncovered. Again, those are the chalices made by the, made for the Pope. Notice the very large one that's shaped just like the others, but about, as we say, a head taller there. Those chalices are from Nigel Price, who's a Sausalito silversmith. Yes, beautiful things. I handled them the other day. They took me into the archdiocesan vaults and showed me all those things. They're going back to the cathedral. The deacons uh, are preparing the altar. The second reading spoke of the first deacon to be martyred, St. Stephen. The deacons helped in the early church with uh, the administration of the church. And it's an order that in the western part of the Catholic Church went out of uh, popular usage and has been restored since the Second Vatican Council. It's an ordained ministry which is open to married men. And there is uh, also a historical precedent for deaconesses in the early church. And so there is some question about would it be possible in our own tradition to ordain women to that ministry which would allow them to preach, to baptize, to witness marriages. The altar was also specially made for the occasion out of black walnut and aluminum strips. The cloth on the altar uh, is placed in a rather different sort of way. Uh, two strips of cloth over each other in the form of a cross. They match the, the, the Pope's garments. One thing you'll notice on the altar that is not often put on them, the altar is our, our group is a group of weights to hold down the cloth in case of wind. Those were specially made also, uh, artistically crafted, out of glass. And those were done by Michael Noiro of Venetia. Mm -hmm. That's right. Notice, note the size of the Pope's chalice, how it's a huge piece of sterling silver. accommodate a large amount of wine for the concelebrants. One of the symbols of communion is not only communion with Christ, but with one another. And of course, in the early church, there would be one loaf of bread and one cup because the community was very small. So sharing from the one cup is a sign of sharing in our faith together. The Pope is going to incense the altar. The thurible he will use, or the incense container, has steel or has aluminum rods around it, and they are to match the aluminum overhanging in St. Mary's Cathedral, the Baldacchino.
my prayers ascend before you, Lord, as this incense is ascending, is the sentiment behind the incensation of the altar from Psalm 141, written about maybe a thousand years before Christ. Pope now incenses the specially made processional cross which has on it a fish net with fish in it. You will be fishers of men, Jesus told Peter and his apostles. Gregorian chant, Pange Lingua Gloriosi, set to a modern harmonization and a modern, modern rhythm, but the tune is exactly the same as the ancient one. And the Pope washes his hands here, originally a practical gesture after receiving the gifts and handling them, but now seen primarily as symbolic of the desire to approach God's altar in purity. deacon having incensed the Pope incenses also the congregation that we together with the gifts on the altar are offering ourselves to God their part in the Mass, the concelebrants texts, which have the prayers of the, which have the Eucharistic prayer set out for them. The Eucharistic prayer used during this Mass, known to Catholics as the third Eucharistic prayer. There are, there are a number of Eucharistic prayers that may be chosen. This one is very often used in parishes. The applause at this part of Mass is a bit unusual. But it was beautiful music. It was beautiful My music. And sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Father, you have given your Son to save the whole world by his sacrifice. By the power of this offering, help all your people to fill the world with the spirit of Christ. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your beloved Son, you created our human family. Through him, you restored us to your likeness. Therefore, it is your right to receive the obedience of all creation the praise of the church on earth, thanksgiving of your saints in heaven. We too rejoice 
with the angels as we proclaim your glory forever. And now the Holy, 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 written by holy, Sister Suzanne Tulin of the Mercy holy, Order. Holy Lord, the words of this acclamation come from Isaiah the prophet. He saw a vision, he tells us, in which God was sitting on a throne. And there were all sorts of creatures around him, praising him in these words, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. This prayer, the Eucharistic prayer that began with the greeting, the Lord be with you, and goes all the way until the great doxology or hymn of praise ending with amen, is the central prayer of the Mass, with acclamations by the people and the Pope as the one presiding at the Eucharist, offers thanks for what God has done for us in creation, in Christ, prays that the Holy Spirit may come upon the gifts of bread and wine. He will extend his hands over them to make them Father, the body and blood of Christ. You are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made by the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was sent, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. The assembly now sings, Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again, which is what we Catholics believe to be the central core of our faith. We have a history, we have a future. Son and you for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace She's with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant, Pope John Paul, our Archbishop John, and all the bishops, with the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Now this is the doxology ending the prayer. Through him with him in, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father. Glory offered to the Father with Christ and the Holy Spirit. The people respond, Amen, making the prayer their own. church, one of the church fathers said that if the priest offered thanks and the people did not respond amen, he could not go on because he was leading them in their prayer and if they did not make his prayer their own, then he could not go on praying. So it's the whole people of God united in thanksgiving here. faces that I see from former parishes in the choir. What a wonderful mix of people from all over the Archdiocese. Jesus told, told us 
to call God our Father. And so we have the courage to say, Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait for joyful hope, for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. priests you just saw walking are bringing the saboria to the altar or probably away from the altar now that the hosts have been consecrated and they're going to bring communion all around the stadium but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and while the hosts were being consecrated in those little glass containers by the Pope, they were holding them along with the lay people the Lord, who are also going to distribute communion. Always. Now let us give each other the sign of peace. We've all just joined in praying together the words that Jesus taught his apostles that they carried to other <coughs> nations, the theme of today's reading. And now in preparing all to receive communion, stands, are asked people stand. are asked to give one another a sign of peace, recognizing that in communion we have not only communion with the Lord, but with one another, the theme of peace that is also in the readings today. Who will be passing either in front of you or behind you. On the field, in order to receive communion, please exit your seats to the left and move forward to the Eucharistic minister closest to you. Return to your seat. There are a thousand people distributing Holy Communion here today to over 70,000 people. There they go. Those are the priests all dressed in white moving along there. Now they're going to begin singing the Lamb of God, composed in this case by Tom Parker, an American songwriter. This rite is known as the breaking of the bread. In the early church, when it was simply a small community and one loaf, breaking the one bread was a sign of their unity. Of course, now with a, a large crowd like this, it's more a symbolic gesture, but a sign that all the baptized, about whom the Pope spoke in his homily, all the baptized from children to adults, from Pope and bishops throughout the church, religious and lay people, all share in the one body of Christ, the one faith. If I might just interject here, the ciborium, the vessel from which they hand the host out are made here locally and the glass blower is from from Venetia and he had to make 1800 to get 1200 right which I thought was a sort of marvelous statistic and they are beautiful and they have a symbol of the Pope's visit in the bottom of them Michael Noro glass blower people wonder about what the effect of the Pope's visit will have. 
one practical effect is we'll have some very beautiful things to use in worship for years to come here in San Francisco. And in all the cities he's been to, if an art catalog were published of all the art, artistic things that came out of the Pope's visit, vestments, vessels, crosses, uh, sub uh, saboria, incense pots, holy water containers, it would be a fair sized catalog. These chalices that we're looking at were hand, hand hammered by Nigel Pierce from Sausalito. I think I mentioned that before, but just before we get through with that list, they're also... Father David Pettengill uh, teaches with me at the seminary, formerly the principal of Marin Catholic High School. Wearing a blue stole. I guess they're all wearing blue, aren't they? Yes. There you see also some lay people giving communion. Deacons. A beautiful example of, of everybody at work. That's what liturgy means, by the way. Liturgy, this whole ceremony is called a liturgy, and it means the work of the people from two ancient Greek words, laos and ergon, work, people. Many people think that when they come to church, it's time to snooze or time to be me and God alone, but uh, the many others who work at it are the ones that make beautiful relationships between the members of the assembly and the, the Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his son. Go and go to The Holy Father will now receive communion. And then he will give communion to, oh, I believe, just over a hundred people who were chosen basically by lottery. Each parish was invited to send in names of people, and names were picked so that it would not depend on who you knew or how much you had, but rather it would be, again, a real representation of all of the people of our church here. It would be nice now if they focused on these people, or probably in the number we know, but you'll see that they represent many different ethnic groups and ages of people. There's someone from your church there, isn't there? Someone yes, yes. yes. And we see her coming up now. The communion song, in the first one in Spanish, Pescador de Hombres, talks about Christ calling the disciples away from their nets to come and follow him. Theme carried out in the cross that we've seen, and in the sense of Jesus making his followers apostles. A word that means one who is sent, like an ambassador, going out to all the nations. this today got and who attended the ceremonies in the cathedral is a beautiful glossy gray with many pictures and photographs and drawings in it something you would something like this you would get at the de young museum on an exhibit you'd pay about five or six dollars for but everybody gets them free Yeah, I think it, uh, St. Mary's has the right of first refusal on everything. <laughs> How many things they will refuse is another question. Since we were passing out credit, that was designed by Jim Bacigalupi, who's from Campbell. He's a San Francisco native. And so was the cross, which it says here weighs a thousand pounds, the one that was described. Is that, could that be correct? No. Uh, the, you mean the processional cross? <laughs> I wouldn't think so either. The processional cross is heavy, though. It, it, it's probably about... 25, 30 pounds. It's heavy if you have to carry it a long ways in a procession. One of the great marvels of this site is the fact that what we are looking at now went up overnight, literally. Because of the baseball game yesterday, Richard Zlatanich was the designer of the environment for the liturgy today, and they put together a marvelous crew that worked all night long to 
build the site. And it's got to come down overnight as That's well. That's right. But it, hopefully something will seep into the ground here and help us in the series. <laughs> There's Father Len Caligari from Pastor Pacifica. The principle or overall theme was the biblical, biblical phrase of the design of this altar. Morning came and Jesus stood on the shore. What is that from? It refers to uh, the end of St. John's Gospel where the disciples in a sense have given up hope and they've gone back to the fishing business. Jesus had called them away from that and they're out fishing and not having much luck and at early morning a figure is standing on the shore and suddenly they start catching fish and they realize who it is that it's the lord and that he prepares breakfast for them and that that breakfast with the lord the risen christ is a great image of the eucharist i'm sure that's why it was picked for this this theme that christ who sends out the apostles also nourishes them now we see the people receiving holy communion from the pope angle it'll be hard to make out anyone we do know yes, yes. <laughs> what does the pope say when the body of christ and everyone who comes up answers amen yes i believe people so far. Do you know any Milt? Uh, standing with the Pope uh, is Monsignor Marini, who is the Pope's Master of Ceremonies. It's his responsibility to see that all of the details of the liturgy move along smoothly. He's the one who holds uh, the book for the Holy Father at some of the services. and Came here, in fact, before the Pope did to go over all of the details for this very, very large liturgical gathering. Pope the blesses the baby. <laughs> Good pastor. Will the uh, papal robes go back on display at St. Mary's? where they have been on the archbishop <laughs> the archbishop yeah. yeah he will wear them yeah and, and i imagine the priests of the cathedral as well they will be used for the liturgical services there I've seen a couple, a sister and a priest going to communion to the Pope there. I guess they were specially chosen for some reason. One was an Ursuline from St. John's. Again today, the Pope is handing the wafer to the people, to their hand. Mm -hmm. and, and you explained the significance of that in the, in the, uh, yesterday at Laguna Seca. Yes, the, 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 used to, we, we used to give communion in a, a person's mouth. And uh, since the Second Vatican Council, that practice has come of putting the host in people's hands, which is a gesture both of receiving and accepting. It's passive and active gesture, both. Here's Mary, one of our parishioners just passed by there. And you also said that the, the Pope normally would give communion to the mouth because 
They didn't want the people to take the wafer home as a souvenir. That's right. There's a sister, presentation sister. I play pinochle with her. <laughs> <laughs> she good? She's very good. <laughs> In all ways. <laughs> seem to be blessed with pretty good weather at Kansas oh, today. Good. You don't see uh, people's hair blowing around as you normally you do in Giants games. Mm -hmm. And Jim, they're going without any hitches. And if they got by last night, <laughs> they get by today. John Balka, the organist, choir master of St. Mary's Cathedral, directing. Go Make Disciples of All Nations is the song by Leon Adkins. It's an old tune, but a new text. my mind at the moment from St. Leander's Church. Jared Jacobson, his name is, that's it. Well, the Pope still has a very long day today ahead of him. After he leaves Candlestick today, he's going to fly on to Detroit. That's right. And then he holds Mass again tomorrow in Detroit. In Detroit, and then he flies off to, oh, what's the name of the place now? It, somewhere up in Alberta, isn't it? Yes, I have it here somewhere. It's a little town in the, in the wilds up there. He was invited by someone, a personal friend. He was to have gone there before and couldn't make it because it was fogged in. Uh -huh. So they're gonna try again. Well, the message of the gospel today was no matter where it is, you must go there. <laughs> Interesting bit of information that uh, we learned a little bit uh, earlier today was that uh, the Pope almost came to San Francisco by BART. Seemed that the, there was a contingency plan and the weather, if the fog drifted in too heavily at Chrissy Field, uh, they were going to land in Oakland and prepare a special bar train uh, for the Pope, and he was going to be brought to San Francisco. But the weather did cooperate. Secret Service thinks of everything. <laughs> I hope they haven't got some plans for us that we don't know about. <laughs> they probably do. Now, the place I was trying to think of, excuse me, Jim, the place I was trying to yes. think of is Fort Simpson in Canada. It's about 600 miles south of the Arctic Circle, 900 miles northwest of Edmonton, mm -hmm. a town of only 1,000 people. Mostly slavey Indians? Mostly slavey Indians. Near where the Laird and Mackenzie Rivers meet. Yeah. Names from Sergeant Preston and the Yukon. You were, <laughs> were you too young for that? <laughs> no. <laughs> this, this song is, we heard it yesterday too, didn't we? No, at, this is new or, for today. This is Eat This Bread and Drink This Cup. And it's composed by um, Jacques Berthier, who is a musician I'm not sure who he either lives at or he's in the employ of the Taizé monastery in Europe where's Taizé milt I'm not Taizé sure Taizé is near Lyon in southern France it's a Protestant well interdenominational but primarily a Protestant monastic community which has tremendous uh, appeal to young people they have thousands and thousands of young people and their music is carried all over the world because of that by young people of uh, various Christian churches this is a wonderful song. We use it in our own parish. It's just a, a kind of a mantra. You keep chanting it. You just There's no verses. It's just eat this bread, drink this cup. Now the Holy Father is giving communion to some elderly. Come to me and never be hungry. Handicapped came down the stairs. Well, 
Were these part of the 100 people that were chosen, Father? I think so, yes. His father, Ed McTaggart. He'll take the ciborium and the Holy Father genuflex, a sign of worship of Christ present in the Eucharist. And now the Pope will go back to his chair. Is Father McTaggart now the assistant vicar general? Yes. Our auxiliary bishop was just moved to Reno, Las Vegas. And so the archbishop asked Father McTaggart to come in. A vicar general uh, assists the bishop in the administration. And the vicar general, who is a priest, the chancellor, who in our case is a woman religious, Sister Mary B. Flaherty, a business manager who is a layman, and then the uh, fourth one is Patrick Hughes, who spoke this morning. They're affectionately known in the diocese as the Gang of Four. <laughs> they basically uh, administer the archdiocese together with the archbishop. And they have had lots and lots of work to do in the past year, as you can imagine, for this visit. I'm sure that everyone's going to take a little vacation. The planning actually began a year ago. Yes. For the San Francisco visit or for the entire tour? Well, for the entire tour, I think it was announced even earlier, and each diocese began planning immediately. We're learning that Fort Simpson is the place where the Pope was scheduled to go in 1984, but he had to cancel because of bad weather. Yes, it's, um, it's um, apparently out in the wilds, as I said before, and a part of the uh, trip is to get some support for Indian land rights. One of those servers who was just washing the Pope's hands is our seminarian from Vietnam, who spent four years in prison there. He was supposed to be ordained a priest back in 1978 and was imprisoned, not allowed to finish his studies, finally escaped and came now to the United States. He'll be working here in San Francisco. Two canters for the Mass. Cup. Come to me and you will not thirst. Pope looks relaxed and happy. Those green banners around the field, they're all separate banners made by different parishes with uh, green pieces that were given to them by the diocese, green pieces of cloth, I believe. And they could make them into any kind of design to denote their own ministries that they wanted to. They will be taken back to St. Mary's Cathedral and flown on the lamps that are in, or the, the light posts that are in the square at St. Mary's on big feasts. And the reason they're green is this is the green season of the church year. I'm sorry? Ordinary time. Ord we call it ordinary time. Christmas season is white, Easter is white, Lent and Advent are purple times, and the times when nothing is happening during the year that's really special like those, we use green, a sign of hope for the that, future. That must be very ancient. Well, it's ancient in, in the West. In the Eastern Church, they don't have that custom of, of having liturgical colors. And different places in the church would use different colors. In England, for example, uh, in the Middle Ages, they would use blue. In Spain, they use blue. You've probably noticed on some occasions during this past week, the Pope has worn a green vestment. At Phoenix, he wore red. That was the Feast of the Triumph of the Cross. And the color of that is red. And red, yes. Red for Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit. Red for martyrs who shed their blood. Good Friday, when we celebrate the, the death of Christ. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. I believe that the, the time is being taken up now by the ministers coming back from communion. The Pope at various times it seems to drift off into prayer. Is that 
is that part of the service or is that just his own individual desire to do that? Part of the service we devote to silence after communion such as this, but also I think it's his own, I guess he's communing with his inner self and the Lord who was there. The New York Times ran an article on that not too long ago in which it said that the Pope violates all the rules of media, reading his script from with his hand instead of using a teleprompter and, and seeming to drift off while other people are speaking into a world all of his own when the camera is on him. In a sense, it's not a performance no. for him. It's a prayer. And yet he's, he's got a great charism for the media and for gestures as well. He's himself before the camera. He will uh, say a prayer which concludes the communion rite and then give the blessing. And then the deacon gives the dismissal. The word mass that we use for the Eucharist comes from the word misa, which means to be sent. And again, that ties in very much with the theme of this liturgy. We come to hear God's word to be nourished so that we can be sent out, sent out to preach, sent out to be peacemakers in our world which was the message of today's homily, and I think Father Walsh is too modest to say so, if, so if you'll permit me. Father Walsh was involved in the writing of the Pope's homily today, with particular respect to San Francisco being the city of hope and the city, at times, for those who've been persecuted and who've taken refuge, and also the passages talking about going forth into the world and preaching to the outcasts. Why do you think that's important? Well, I think because, first of all, it's the city of St. Francis, and it's a city where many cultures meet. It's a city at times of great violence. We've had violence in our own city with the government officials, with the mayor being killed a few years ago. It's a city that needs to be peaceful, the United Nations, and I think the gospel really is meant for all Let people. Now the Pope will lead us in prayer. Share with us the fullness of your love and give us new courage at this Eucharistic feast. May the people you call to work in the world be effective witnesses to the truth of the gospel and make your church a living presence in the midst of that world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The popes and bishops always put on mitres for blessings. The Lord be with God the Father has called us to be in one family of people. May He fill your hearts with deep longing for peace and harmony. Amen. The Son of God came to share our lives and to make us children of the, of the one Father. May he enable you to grow in wisdom and grace before God and the human family. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the bond of love between Father and Son. May he be the bond of love among you, in your nation, and among all people. 
the microphone back. He wants to say something. This is the same thing happens at church on Sunday. <laughs> musicians and priests getting pews. cards, huh? My brother and sisters, Paul VI and not half as much as at the end of this our meeting, this Eucharistic celebration, you have probably a message to me, for me to transmit to San Francis in Italy. <laughs> So, so I think I shall say to your Saint Patron, Saint Francis, that he should remain still in a season for the whole world. But I shall say to him that his spiritual presence here at the west coast of America is very, very, very needed. I hope that the saints are able to do both. <laughs> to be in Assisi and to be also spiritually here at the west coast of America in San Francisco. And I wish you to be still not only proud of this name, this saint, but also be faithful to the great message that he still transmit to all of to all of us everywhere in the whole world thank you very much for this opportunity to meet together during the eucharistic celebration special thanks for the choir and for all who prepare this celebration i say that here it must have been a very good choir performance because he doesn't do that very often. Because it was. Speaking as a musician, I can say the music was first rate today. What I say here, I, I refer also to Los Angeles, city of the angels. You are privileged in the West. Western coast of America, western part of America, very privileged not only to be in communion of the saints, but also to be in communion of the angels. Once 
again. Thank you very much, and God bless you, every one of you, your families, and all your, all your community. San Francisco and of California. Praise be our Lord Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Those are the first words he spoke as Pope. He came out onto the balcony. It's an Italian greeting. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. The first words he spoke when he was elected. And those, I suspect, the last words he will speak to us yeah. in California, in San Francisco. That's right. We conclude with the hymn, In Christ there is no east or west, in him no north or south, but one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. Words written in the latter part of the 1800s by John Oxenham. Isn't that a Protestant hymn? He was a Protestant missionary. around the Bay Area? Yes, they were. They were auditioned. Huh? In our own parish choir, there are there were about four representatives from our parish. And then some of the other choir members were from neighboring dioceses. So I think we, we provided about 150 or so, and, and they the other 150. And 30 members of the brass choir. I, I'm not exactly sure how many brass choir, but I was given to understand that many. Uh -huh. Pope enjoyed it. Pope enjoyed it. Is he accustomed to giving these uh, afterthoughts? Most places, like even this morning, talking to the lady at the cathedral, I think he, he wants to give a personal message in addition to the text that he reads, and especially as he's leaving San Francisco. He said that the spirit of St. Francis was needed in Assisi, but also, he said, on the west coast of America, it is very, very, very needed. <laughs> what did he, what is the spirit of St. Francis that is so needed? I think we all have to take that in the spirit in which we received it. But St. Francis is? He would be, uh, well, you know, the Pope last night at Mission Dolores, or yeah, yesterday at the Carmel Mission, spoke about St. Francis. I guess it was at Mission Dolores. He spoke about St. Francis as someone who was uh, a lover of nature, a man of peace, uh, a disciple who was willing to undergo great sacrifices, and, and a great symbol, you know, as he said, for people, many people outside of Christianity revere St. Francis as a holy man, and no church has a monopoly on goodness, and we all need more of it. program tells me now that there's going to be an organ piece called Tu es Petrus, Tu es Petra, Thou Art the Rock. It's a very famous organ piece in which a Gregorian chant theme, You Are the Rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, comes out in the bass. Ladies and gentlemen, security requires that you remain in your place. He still has to be with the people. He must get energized by this. We wonder how many hands he must shake on a 10-day tour. <laughs> how many hands touch him? They're all putting their hands on his vestments now. Yeah. He the seems very maker. at home with it all, though. Yes. Those of the disabled.
I've seen him at audiences in Rome, and he seems to just know certain people that he wants to, to reach out to in a special way.